Hey guys, Chris Sawyer here. The Varietal Show is back. We are sitting here in Del Mar, California. You guys might know this San Diego area, Del Mar, amazing. I'm with my great friend, Tracy Dutton, and my amazing winemaker friend, Adam Lazar. We are here for an amazing reason. Uh, actually, two amazing reasons, let's put it that way. The Toast of the Coast competition that we just did um, at the Del Mar um, Fairgrounds, and especially at the Del Mar Downs, which is the racetrack that Bing Crosby made, uh, created back before the 1930s even started. And what an amazing man he was to come here to Del Mar of all places. And we've had a great uh, couple of days. It has been a little stormy, we will say mm -hmm. that. And I don't know if uh, most San Diego people were really used to this, and we found out that they were not. Uh, but we've, uh, we've, we've, we've done a good journey together. But the other part that we wanted to talk about is, this is where our Friends of Pinot Meunier Society was founded. And in fact, it was founded right here at this very hotel mm -hmm. that we're in. This is the best western, and it is the best western of Del Mar. Uh, this is an amazing place to stay. We have not been here for a few years, and you know, the pandemic and everything happened. But Pinot Meunier matters, you guys. And here we are having the Bouchain Pinot Meunier. If you go back in a few tracks of my, the legacy of this show, um, you will find A, number one, that Adam Lazar is the first person that was ever on this show. Ooh. And that the first uh, discussion of Pinot Meunier was exactly with Tracy Dutton and me and the great Chris uh, Kajani at none other than Bouchane uh, that was ever on the show. And here we are sitting here after a great night of celebrating our, you know, Toast to the Coast, you know, the legacy of the to Toast to the Coast mm -hmm. and, and the great fairgrounds, but drinking great wines, but we always do a presentation on the Friends of Pinot Meunier. Tracy, tonight was a good night. It um, was a good night. We got 25 new members. Um, yes. First of all, that's, and you should be a member, Friends of Pinot Meunier Society, and look it up on Facebook. That's, that's a no-doubter. Uh, but... Tell us a little bit about what happened tonight. Well, to, so tonight was our fifth annual conference. Uh, even though it's been six years since we started the society. And we had four speakers in addition to myself. Keynote speakers. Key Key all, all They're keynote all keynote speakers. speakers. Yes, because Never doubt it. everything we have to say about Pinot Meunier mm -hmm. is keynote worthy. Keynote. Um, Wayne Belding. The very the, modest and humble master sommelier, um, who always supplies us with, with incredible. And we will talk about that in a moment. Talked a little bit about uh, one of the oldest Pinot Meunier vineyards planted in the world in yep. Australia. Yep. And um, we were many people, not everyone, was able to have a little taste of that. Uh, um, Rich Cook gave us a little bit of an update on the status of Pinot Meunier. We love Meunier Rich Cook. In uh, the critic circles, which he's very active in, as well as the wine competition circle. Yep. And uh, we even had a pretty wonderful Pinot Meunier rose that was entered into this very I competition, um, made by Mike Draxton yep. in Geyserville, um, who, is a, who used to work with one of our other friends, Daryl Groom, the, the great Daryl Groom, uh, well, and I want to know what vineyard in the Napa Valley he's getting that. Me from. too, but he's let's let's stop for one second. Mm -hmm. Let me put you on pause. So, if you guys don't know about Pinot Meunier, let's just talk about that for a second. What, what the heck are, is sort of talking about? So, uh, Pinot Meunier is the relative of Pinot Noir. So, Pinot Noir has these offsprings. One of them is Pinot Meunier. That's the red one that we know the most. And we also know a few other ones. You ever hear of Pinot Grigio or slash Pinot Gris? Mm -hmm. That is a white mutation of Pinot Noir. And we also have Char its relationship to Chardonnay. Chardonnay would not exist if Pinot Noir would never have existed too. So that's a very special point about it. But we also have these other things that we get into when like Pinot Blanc. That's another offspring of Pinot Noir that a lot of people know about. Pinot Meunier, why it's so famous, the most famous in, in just in general, 
like for most people talking about this, is because it's actually the third grape in the Champagne region. So you know, by law, you can use Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Pinot Meunier. And so they're all part of the same family, which is an interesting uh, concept. But Pinot Meunier is, in our case here in California and in the United States in general, underrated. No one knows much about it. Tracy, how many varieties in the world there are? And tell us a little bit about the statistics about Pinot yeah, Meunier. Yeah, so there's, uh, I, at this point, I think we know, we, we. collectively, know of more than 10,000 vinifera grape varieties around the globe, documented. And um, in the world ranking of planting, uh, according to the University of Adelaide, who does a rigorous, but it's very difficult to work with all of these governments, as you can imagine, yes. getting full a full census report of what grapevines are planted. Pinot Meunier is currently the 63rd most planted vinifera grape variety in the world. So if you guys win a trivia contest because of that note, do not forget Tracy Dutton. She deserves to win. Which, um, by the way, we're yeah. starting a wine trivia contest at the Culinary Institute of America. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so that's where Good Tracy, way. you can find Tracy all the time at the Culinary Institute of America in Napa Valley. Um, and a dear friend of mine. You can call me and find out how to get a hold of Tracy. But there will be it. prizes. There will be prizes. Yeah. That's all that matters. So we get into this thing tonight, and we have a great, very good example from Wayne that he brought. Mm -hmm. Wayne brought the oldest known planting of Pinot Meunier. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that, Tracy. From Great Western uh, Winery yep. in Australia. Planted Australia? 1868. 1868. So yeah. the vines that we were tasting, that were the, the fruit from the vines, was from vines that were planted in 1868. Yeah. And that is amazing for Pinot Meunier. We don't really have that many for Pinot Noir, to be really honest. I mean, we could go back to Burgundy and we can find some examples, but I can't think of one that goes back to 1868. Mm -hmm. And that's how long this uh, vine can live. It's kind of like the Movedra of the GSM. So GSM, mm -hmm. Grenache, Syrah, Movedra. You know Grenache, you know Syrah. Movedra, not as well known. But you can outlive some of these vines. Um, interesting. But, so, and here's, this is the thing we didn't get to talk about tonight that I think is so interesting, and I'd love for Adam to weigh in, is you know, with all of our concerns about climate change and global warming and um, you know, weather events, just globally, yeah. not just in California. Yeah. Um, Pinot Meunier is maybe one of the handful of grape varieties that people are looking at as a potential new producer, right? A new, new, new wave of production right. here. What we could, what could we plant? In fact, one of the interesting things about Pinot Meunier in it is that to be really honest it actually grows in very cool climate areas and mm -hmm. the most cool and almost misty not very sunny areas of champagne and that's what's so interesting about it is it really has a character that can actually evolve a little bit more so we think about you know what is the the, the what's the future of the wine industry can we push it out towards the ocean oh i think this yeah. might be the answer right here and one the, so one of the things I read about in Oregon uh, grape crime is the Pinot Meunier. Well, it's an early uh, ripener, right, which helps battle, um, you know, as the as the fall begins to come on and things like rain and rot and uh, frost. cold frost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so an early ripener, good mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. It's high acid wine, so with uh, global warming. Uh, which will certainly affect um, the acid level yep. of your grape varieties. Yep. Having a grape variety that's going to maintain those high acid levels is a good thing. Um, and it also creates a style of wine that I think is becoming more and more popular with um, more expressive fruitiness without being sort of 
heavy handed and laden in just saying, high alcohol. Just saying. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I, I mean, I, th I, like I, it. I think it, its entire personality, from vineyard to glass, yeah. is something that everybody's ready to embrace. Yeah. What, what did you get out of this experience tonight? I mean, it was a big experience that we had there. Yeah. So it was almost out of body experience that we had. You know, so yeah. for me, the, you know, the grape it has a lot of similarities, um, richness, the mouthfeel, uh, even to some extent. The nose, the aromatics yeah. of Pinot Noir, uh, but it's it's distinctive. It's different. Yeah. It, in fact, you you taste you can taste a lot of Pinot Noir, and, and some of them are pretty radically different. But when you taste Pinot Meunier, there's a similarity between yeah. all of them, no matter where they're grown. And uh, to your point about global warming and things getting warmer, so we're looking at grape varieties being grown in areas. Traditionally, where it's been too cold to grow yep. it. So you're seeing Nova Scotia, you're seeing England. Nova Scotia. Um, yeah. Having wines from there. Columbia, this is possible, yeah. Michigan, Ontario. And so, you know, we, we can grow grapes there, but often they've been hybrids or native grapes. And um, usually white, too. Yeah. That's the other thing. Mm -hmm. This is a red grape, as you can see from these fabulous plastic glasses we have at our fabulous hotel. But the fact is, it is a really great um, one that we don't really see it in the brutes that are made in Champagne because it's usually pressed off and it's not usually in the rosés that we see. It's more in the brutes, which means that it's got all three in there. So it's Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Pinot Meunier in there. So we, we don't identify it that well. It's like hard to, oh, well, it's kind of light, light uh, red. Oh, it must be Pinot, right? Um, well, not necessarily, but in this case, most of the cases, we don't really have the rosés that really are Pinot Meunier based. Um, not that many in the world, at least. Um, and that's what we're trying to change. Um, and we're also trying to just get the acknowledgement of this. But I feel like you're absolutely right. This is There's a, something going on with this grape, you guys. I want you to be aware of this. Well, and but, I mean, you, you're on the cutting edge right now. The very fact that it can be expressive in a Champagne method, yep. sparkling wine, and a red wine, yeah. yeah. and a rosé yeah. in between. So I think this is one of the grape varieties that is perfectly suited to move into the areas that have uh, yeah. traditionally been yeah. what we consider too cool. So yeah. we're seeing Pinot Meunier in Wales and mm -hmm. in the UK, and it's doing very, very well. Obviously, yeah. the sparkling wines are out of this world now. I couldn't say that 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but you're also starting to see plantings of this stuff. I'm, I'm hearing people talk about this uh, in parts in Canada mm -hmm. um, and in places where traditionally it been, you know, so this is going to be one of the first grapes I think would, that would be perfectly suited if you don't experiment and you're looking at putting together uh, 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 a vineyard in, uh, you know, Ohio or Michigan or even Minnesota. That mm -hmm. so, uh, take a look at possibly this being a, uh, you know, a grape that might be better suited for that uh, as you're moving into vinifera away from the hybrids and yep. the traditional grapes of that. that I agree. Uh, I just think this is a very exciting moment, for, especially for our organization, the Friends of Pinot Meunier. Don't, do not doubt that. Society. And the yeah. society part of it. So, um, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're a strong organization. How many members do we have now? Almost 300. A lot of winemakers. Hopefully by um, tomorrow morning yeah, yeah. we'll have 300. Hopefully we'll have more with you guys joining us on Facebook. But the fact is, it, David Stevens, who really was one of our amazing, he was not just a founder of this organization, but it really came down where we started it right here on this property, actually right outside, when he mm -hmm. brought an amazing sparkling wine that was just 100% Pinot Meunier. This is probably seven, eight years mm -hmm. ago. And we said, like, we got to start a whole organization after this grape because it's so cool. And we don't know what where it's going to go. And we've seen some changes. And we've seen some amazing things. I want to say a lot about um, Boucher Winery. Guess who was the winemaker at Boucher Winery in the old days? Dave Stevens. Mm -hmm. um, this man was amazing. And when I bought it, um, when I started buying this for the Lodge at Sonoma, when I was a small year there, this was, um, uh, you know, a, a different kind of, group had come in, but I was buying this because people wanted Pinot Noir on, on the wine list and they were having a hard time because the Pinot Noir list was too big. 
they just need a piano Meunier, actually, mm -hmm. is what they really Something needed. Like and and it's just like if you can tell them that, <laughs> and then they taste it, and they're like, wow, this is amazing. How do I, how does this piano Meunier start? And, you know, I want to, um, you know, I want to thank uh, Bouchain so much and uh, Chris yes. Kajani. We love you, Chris Kajani. But, like, this this winery, okay, so this is a 2019 vintage. This is 325 cases made. It's 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 already sold out. This is library stock. Their 2021 is already sold out, and that was a little bit more production. And this stuff flies, you know, like when you put it out there and people go into the wineries and go, I like Pinot, 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 and they don't think about Pinot Meunier, they have this, and they're like, oh, oh I'm just going to buy a case of that. And it sells out so quick. You just got to get it in somebody's mouth. Yeah. It sells itself. Yeah. I think we made our points pretty um, so solid. Yeah. There's one, yeah. I have one really geeky thing that I want to talk about. Let's go. That I think you'll appreciate. And I'm, I am not a scientist. I wish I was, but I'm not. So there is something. Mm. <laughs> Both he and I are mm, there is about that. There yeah. is something. <laughs> and I'll send, you the, I'll send you the research that I found on this. There is something about the genetics of Pinot Meunier as a grapevine that uh, viticultural researchers have been able to tap into to create a plant that will bear fruit multiple times a year. What? Which is not the true nature of most grapevines, right? That sounds crazy. <laughs> that, most grapevines will crazy. produce fruit once a year. Okay. Are you, are you conceptualizing this? I know, they, I know that they can do stuff like that in Venezuela, so, and, but that's but that's what the with you're that talking about chemical like, intervention. Mm, no, yeah. so, so, so the, and mm -hmm. the, the advantage of this is that when you're doing grapevine research, Okay. Usually you would have to wait an entire year mm -hmm. okay. to see the results of your work. But if you have a grapevine that will produce fruit multiple times a year, it accelerates the process of your research by allowing you to have samples to examine multiple times a year. I know it is my I'm conceptualizing. Like I'm, I'm having yeah. a moment inside so, the brain right now, you guys. But they were never like able it. to do this until they discovered it's pretty geeky, this guys. sort of genetic anomaly within the Pinot Meunier So it's essentially it's a cross between Pinot Noir and a rabbit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But what that, that means yeah. is that so much research in uh viticulture and the and the you know propagation of grapevines and the growing of uh, uh, vineyards and and all of the things that we never think about as wine yeah. drinkers you know disease prevention mm -hmm. and um, keep going keep going uh, all, all of the things that we want to give our grape growers as an advantage tools in the business of growing grapes and making wine um, can be accelerated by the miracle that is this. The miracle of Pinot Meunier. Right? So this is actually a grapevine that is giving back to its industry as a humble plant. It is a miracle grape. Yeah. It's, it's yes. pretty amazing stuff. Once again, you are listening to an amazing commentary right now on Pinot Meunier and the friends of Pinot Meunier mm -hmm. Society. I hope you guys can become a member of this society. Um, we could go on forever, and it's probably not going to do us any you good right now. You can all become a member. But, but if you follow us, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. But this is just a fun society because we believe in this grape, you guys. And I hope you believe in it, too. So. Friends of Pinot Meunier Society, we, we support the Boucher um, uh, Foundation and, and how good they've been to us in the past. It's a 2019 tasting beautiful right now. It is. But we, we, cheer you, we, peer you, we cheer you guys all on, and we hope that every time that you taste a real, true, you know, 
champagne from France, you think about, oh, you know what, there could be Pinot Meunier in here. Mm -hmm. And we start thinking about some things, especially looking on wine lists that actually are very good wine lists from around the world. And you go like, you know, Pinot Noir is my, it's, it's my instinct to just go there. Ask them if they've got some Pinot Meunier. Yeah. And if they don't, tell them they need some. And that would help all of us in society. Am I right? Yeah. Cheers to that, you guys. Thanks for joining the, um, the great show once again. The, the Varietal Show will be back again once, uh, you know, like next week, as always. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank, once again, Adam Lazar, the amazing man who started this show with me, believe it or not. I did a great broadcast with him, and um, people said, how do I get on the show, Chris Sawyer? And it's just because of Adam Lazar, I stopped by my house during the pandemic, and that's why. So that's one big thing here. And also, my great soul sister, Tracy Dutton. So thanks once again, you guys. Cheers to all of you, and cheers to the Bridal Show. We'll see you again next week. Cheers.